Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. But before we jump on in, I just want to ask guys to hit that like button. It does help the channel grow immensely. And of course, I always do greatly appreciate it. So obviously some of the market is down because Bitcoin has been doing a little bit of some swing action from $30,000 down to 28.7K. We will most likely come down a little bit lower tomorrow. I think that the markets are a little bit overreacting to you know the indices from earlier today we will address that and talk about that as well um, but we did see the candle close today for the daily at 28.7k still making those lower highs on the daily candles which i'm not liking um, it is printing a fairly bearish point um, now where do i foresee bitcoin testing today if we do continue to see the same reaction uh, well i told you guys about that january candle going back as far as 2021 that is the yearly low going back as far as 2021 uh, that would basically be 27.7k yet again being tested and i do foresee that liquidity hunt being targeted and it will most likely sweep those lows for a nice impulsive move aka relief rally above 34k so that's what i'm watching for right now so you know expect something similar to you know this where we see this drop down to these levels uh liquidity hunt followed by a nice impulsive move most likely back above this significant fib level if we don't we'll most likely reject and come down to test the top of this candle or uh to a top of this uh rectangle which is the lows going back towards like the summertime or even you know 28.8k which we just recently tested by the way um but you know again i want to see a strong re reaction from here up to around this fib level uh in order to have you know lower invalid data because again we are still trading against resistance on bitcoin now i did mention on twitter because i've been seeing a lot of individuals being a little bit bearish around crypto and i said you know what people don't realize is that there will be candle wicks down 20 plus percent but also candle wicks up 40 plus percent this market moves fast in both directions at the craziest times when you least expect it and this is what i've been telling a lot of individuals like you know people think that you know, Bitcoin just going to break down to like 18, you know, 20K, roughly around that range. And I've been seeing, you know, a few numbers all the way down to like 10K plus. What people don't realize is just as, as fast as we went down, you know, we could equally go up as fast. And I don't think that people realize just how volatile crypto actually is. You know, this is a market that moves fast when you least expect it, and it doesn't care about your emotions at all. So again, if you're going to play into the emotions of this market and you are going to fear buying at lows and, you know, fear selling at highs, then this market is just not going to be for you. But of course, I've always addressed that, you know, right now, I'm not selling anything. Um, I have been stopped out of some positions, but I've ended up buying lower on those positions anyways. And I still do have a buy target on a few assets, which I will be most likely talking about uh, tomorrow if we do hit them. But we also did see here the crash is over. Now, obviously, this is a little bit of an insider joke, but we did see Jim Cramer say today, I will say this, this has to be one of the worst days I can recall in years, and I have been around the block. And if you guys did miss it, essentially, the indices had an incredible day today. And when I say incredible, it was incredibly fearful uh, for a lot of individuals on Wall Street, as we did see the Dow Jones go down over 1,100 plus points, uh, closing the day out at negative 1,164 the Nasdaq down 566 and even the S&P 500 down 165 so if we don't see a relief run tomorrow we'll most likely see the Dow Jones come down to about 30,000 I don't know if you guys remember from my video uh, yesterday but I basically told you a max fear situation on um, you know the Dow Jones where we come down to test 30,000 um, and the reason why I say this is that this is the next major, you know, FIB level down at roughly the 29.9K zone, um, aka testing the yearly lows at around roughly the January time frame. This would be pretty significant if we got it. And it would be, you know, about a 4% drop right now uh, from the level that we are at on the Dow Jones, which this is basically what you could look at um, in terms of a percentage drop. It's almost like 5%. Now, with this in mind, we'll most likely see, you know, Bitcoin act accordingly. We'll most likely get that wick down to the bottom here at 27.7K. Um, but I'm definitely going to be watching that pretty closely. But yeah, it was a pretty rough day for stocks. Um, but also for everyone that is concerned about the current market situation, we do see here they don't care about equities or crypto. They do care about credit freezing. The printer is coming. 
And I actually do foresee that the Fed is most likely going to start up the printing press again. Um, I think that the Fed right now is just trying to, you know, prop up the markets for a little bit more. Uh, we'll most likely have that one last major impulse on the charts before we do go into a fairly rough time. And that rough time is most likely going to be a repeat of 2008 and it will most likely be a lot worse. And I've been seeing a lot of people ask me, how do you prepare for something like that? Well, you don't want to be in debt. Uh, make sure that you don't have any debt under your name. Make sure that you are stacking as much money as possible. And when I say stacking as much money as possible, make sure that you are holding on to hard assets as well, not only crypto. Um, as we do see crypto go on this last major run, um, I'm definitely going to be selling a lot near the top. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be selling the exact top. It's impossible to do so, but I'm definitely going to be stacking my chips uh, and I will be rebuying the dip during the bear market 100%. But I do foresee a pretty you know, significant time coming in time, and that time is going to be a collapse of the current financial system. And in fact, we are already seeing that. The European Central Bank has told banks to buckle up and prepare for a bumpy road ahead. Definitely trouble in paradise. We also do see our UK inflation hits 9%, highest since 1982. In December, the IMF told the UK to plug gaps in the non-bank sector so they could deal with the, a market crisis more effectively. I wonder how that is going. And we also did see here, Federal Reserve Powell, we will continue raising rates until we see inflation coming down or until something breaks. And yeah, I mean, things are getting pretty interesting right now around the current economic structure in the US. Uh, we're seeing, you know, supply chain disruptions. We're seeing, you know, food shortages, things like that. Um, I think that it's all just mass panic right now um, to kind of distract everyone from buying anything. Um, we just seen Warren Buffett, you know, put in the highest amount of, you know, money in terms of a large buy uh, in, you know, history. I mean, it was like, I, I think it was like in years since he bought last. And that is pretty significant. So again, when we are seeing these massive billionaires and we're seeing institutional investors jumping into a lot of these positions, it tells me that we will most likely see that massive relief rally uh, before, of course, we have that massive decline in prices. That's also what I've been talking to you guys a little bit about the Dow Jones too. Like we'll most likely come down to test these lows uh, to get that liquidity. And then we'll see that massive impulsive move back to again, either the all time highs or even above the all time highs. And I've been telling you guys about the topping point for the Dow Jones, on my opinion, at least, uh, which is like roughly between 40,000 to 45,000. So um, I'm definitely watching those levels closely on the Dow Jones. We might not get to them, but hey, that's what I'm expecting, at least in terms of a massive relief rally. Now, also, I do want to talk to you guys about an SEC settlement, a.k.a. the SEC lawsuit as well. Uh, we do hear from Jeremy Hogan. This motion to compel by Ripple is really an XRP de force of its fair notice affirmative defense. And although it's always a good idea to get the other side before passing judgment, this motion makes me think that the judge is going to grant this motion um, as to every category. And if you guys did miss it today, Ripple defendants file a motion to compel regarding the SEC's deficient uh, responses to Ripple's defendants' fourth set of requests for admissions. And we do see down here a request for admission reduces the burden of litigation for the parties and court if the S, uh, SEC sorry admits that chair Clayton gave a certain speech and the transcript of the speech is accurate Ripple now doesn't have to subpoena him uh, to trial just to prove that was indeed his speech here remarkably the SEC won't even concede that certain speeches were made um, and that the transcripts on their own website are accurate transcripts of the speeches this failure by the SEC counsel wastes time money and resources and here, the ob uh, objection that market participant is ambiguous and therefore the SEC cannot answer the uh, request smells like the type of gamesmanship uh, that will get you in trouble in court. Let's see the SEC response, but I wouldn't want to be the attorney drafting that one. So guys, honestly, when we are talking about this entire case right now, things are getting very interesting around the um, you know fair notice defense game. And I think that that is going to most likely be the significant area to focus on when we're talking about a settlement and i do foresee a settlement coming up very very soon i'm not going to say you know a specific date but i've always said around the summer into fall time frame um, is an area that I'm really looking at in terms of a settlement. But of course, I know that a lot of people are expecting a settlement to happen around the November timeframe uh, since we did see, you know, that major update from Netburn talking about, you know, really kind of conceding the entire case by around that time frame, uh, which would definitely be interesting uh, for, you know, you know, the Christmas of 2022 for all those XRP holders out there. Um, but we also did see here from Tom Emmer, uh, Gary Gensler, you put all the SEC's taxpayer uh, funded resources into crypto crackdowns. Now you don't have the funds to do your actual job. So you're coming to Congress for more. You've got to be kidding me. 
This is actually pretty interesting. So the SEC is essentially out of money. We do see our SEC chair Gary Gensler said his agency lacks the resources to adequately police financial markets that grew by double digits over the last five years. With crypto industry enforcement devouring most or more of the agency's resources, those problems are only poised to get worse. We should have you know, grown during these last five years. Instead, the opposite happened. He told the House uh, Appropriations Committee on Wednesday, noting that the agency's headcount of full-time employees has remained flat despite the number of private funds and registered public entities having climbed steadily during the, that period. So this is actually pretty interesting. We do see President Joe Biden's fiscal year 2023 budget request would boost the securities regulators annual uh, appropriation by 8% to roughly $2.15 billion, an amount that would allow the agency to maintain its current services while adding roughly 250 full-time staff to support areas like digital asset oversight and new technology and, um, efforts. This is going to be interesting. When we look at this, so you know what I read of this? I read increasing the budget uh, to, to, to $2.15 billion, having those 250 full-time staff to look into digital assets and really oversight and you know overreach in terms of power to enforce crypto regulations. They are going to come after crypto extremely hard. And I want you guys to know right now is the best time to get your crypto off of these exchanges. I've told you guys time and time again, do not have your crypto on these exchanges. If you are preparing to sell, if you're preparing to buy, make sure that you are ready to either one, transact the crypto over to an exchange to sell or transact the crypto from an exchange to your ledger. And I say ledger because I support ledger fully. I've owned one for years now. Um, I'm affiliated with them. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. They are not paying me or anything like that. I collect money off of my affiliate link. So if you guys do want to purchase a ledger, you guys could utilize my link down in the description below or in the comments below. You guys are not obligated to utilize my link at all, but definitely go to Ledger's official website if you are looking to buy one because third party sellers can tamper with them. But I would say right now that this looks like we are going to see a lot more attacks on crypto from the SEC as they are demanding more of a budget because of course they've overreached and cracked down on crypto far too much and it's funny now more than ever that they're asking for more money i mean did they not collect enough money from all the scams that they ran in the past couple of years i mean look at this right consensus eth etc is in bed with the sec 2018 ethereum gets a free pass hinman gets 15 million dollars from simpson thatcher while at the sec ripple gets sued as a distraction hinman and clayton leave the sec and go to work for bitcoin ethereum central companies gensler we have clarity Guys, I want you go. To, I want you all to go check out Roll XRP on Twitter and go to this link. You guys could read the entire ETHgate situation. It is comical right now that there is no investigation happening around the SEC. We've already known, right? The I, I really do feel for the entire XRP community because we've watched the SEC stand by, overreach, and overregulate crypto and attack. You know, pick winners and losers daily. And we've been sitting here silently while none of our arguments get heard. I want to see a massive investigation on the SEC. I really do foresee at some point in time. Okay, this is why I really want Ripple to win the lawsuit. If we see Ripple win this lawsuit, I really do believe that that is going to be a pivotal moment in time. And we will most likely see a lot of these officials, right? These elitists that are around the SEC, past employees and even current employees, get arrested because i think that when we look at investigations happening on uh, happening behind the scenes and things like that like you know when we look at things moving right now around this sec lawsuit we could easily see the clear corruption and honestly the xrp community has been absolutely killing the game in terms of you know really kind of looking into this and investigating it from their point of view without even getting paid to so just imagine what an actual investigation would really kind of put a spotlight on so i'm definitely looking forward to seeing ripple win just to see these individuals you know really get caught because i think that when we look at things around this entire lawsuit from the inception of it it was all a major corrupt case but with that in mind i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.